Have you ever wondered how stars, those glittering specks in the night sky, come to be? Well, it all starts with a humble beginning, a cloud of cosmic dust and gas floating in the vast expanse of space. This isn't just any dust, it's the stuff of galaxies, the raw materials for creating stars. Under the relentless pull of gravity, this cosmic dust and gas start to come together, to coalesce into a more substantial entity known as a protostar. This is the infant stage of a star, still growing, still gathering matter. As the protostar continues to accumulate matter, the pressure and temperature at its core start to rise dramatically. And there comes a moment, a tipping point, when the conditions at the core are just right to ignite nuclear fusion. This is the process that powers a star, converting hydrogen into helium and releasing an immense amount of energy. So, a star is born, not with a bang, but with a slow, steady ignition of fusion at its core. What happens after a star is born, you might ask? Well, once a star is fully formed, it enters a stage known as the main sequence. This is the star's adult life, so to speak, and it's where stars spend the majority of their lives. But what does life look like for a star in the main sequence? It's a period of stability, a delicate balance of forces at play. This balance is all thanks to nuclear fusion, the process that powers a star. In the heart of a star, under extreme temperature and pressure, hydrogen atoms come together to form helium. This process is called nuclear fusion, and it's incredibly powerful. It releases an enormous amount of energy in the form of light and heat, which is why stars shine so brightly. But nuclear fusion does more than just make stars bright. It also creates a sort of outward pressure. This pressure is absolutely crucial for a star's stability. Why? Well, because stars are massive, they have a strong gravitational pull that's constantly trying to squeeze the star into a smaller, denser ball. However, the pressure from nuclear fusion pushes back against this gravitational pull. It's like a tug of war, with gravity pulling in and fusion pushing out. This balance between the two keeps the star stable and maintains its size, allowing it to shine steadily for billions of years. But don't be fooled by this apparent stability. Stars are far from static, they are dynamic, ever-changing systems. Within their fiery hearts, nuclear fusion is constantly converting hydrogen into helium, releasing energy, and maintaining the delicate balance that allows the star to exist. This process continues until the star's hydrogen supply starts to dwindle, but that's a story for another time. So while it might seem like stars are unchanging, they're actually constantly battling between the forces of gravity and nuclear fusion. Like all things in the universe, stars too have an end, but how does a star die? Now that's a question that has intrigued scientists for centuries. The process of a star's demise is a dramatic spectacle, an astronomical ballet if you will, that unfolds over billions of years. When a star has exhausted its hydrogen fuel, it doesn't just fizzle out, instead, it expands, swelling to a size that can be hundreds or even thousands of times its original scale. This transformation results in what we call a red giant, or in the case of the most massive stars, a supergiant. But why does it expand, you ask? It's because the star begins to burn helium after its hydrogen supply is depleted. This fusion of helium atoms creates heavier elements like carbon and oxygen. The higher temperatures and pressures in the star's core enable these reactions to occur. As this fusion process continues, progressively heavier elements are formed, all the way up to iron. However, once a star starts to produce iron, it's essentially writing its own cosmic obituary. Why? because the fusion of iron doesn't produce energy, instead it consumes energy, destabilizing the star. Ultimately, the star's fate is determined by its mass. The pressure at its core can no longer withstand the gravitational force pulling everything inward, and the star collapses under its own weight. This implosion can trigger a supernova, an explosion so bright that it can outshine an entire galaxy. The aftermath of this explosion is equally fascinating. If the star was relatively small, it might become a white dwarf, slowly cooling over billions of years. If it was a bit more massive, it might turn into a neutron star, an incredibly dense object. And if the star was truly colossal, it might collapse into a black hole, a region of space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. So, in death, a star gives birth to some of the heaviest elements in the universe, and perhaps to another star. From dust and gas to a glowing beacon and back again, but does the cycle stop there? Absolutely not, my friends. In the grand cosmic scale, the remnants of a deceased star often form nebulae, these vast, beautiful clouds of dust and gas. And within these nebulae, the cycle begins anew, giving birth to fresh stars, thus continuing the cycle of stellar life. Now let's bring it closer to home. Our own sun, the very star that grants us light and life, is currently in its main sequence. 
It too, like all stars, will eventually meet its end. But fear not, for its death will only serve as a catalyst for new beginnings, potentially birthing a new generation of stars. Thus the life cycle of stars is a cosmic dance of birth, life, death, and rebirth, an eternal cycle of transformation. It's a reminder that we are all part of this grand unending cosmic ballet. From our brief journey, we've seen the life of stars is not so different from ours. Born from clouds of gas and dust, they spend most of their existence in the main sequence, just like how we spend most of our lives growing and maturing. But as with all things, stars also meet their end. Some go out with a whisper, fading into white dwarfs, while others explode in spectacular supernovae, seeding the universe with the elements of life. This cosmic cycle of birth, life, and death is not just a fascinating spectacle. It's the engine that drives the universe, creating and recycling the very stuff we're made of. So the stars we gaze at every night are not just distant lights. They're our cosmic relatives, part of an ongoing story of creation and destruction. Remember, every star in the sky, including our own sun, is on this cosmic journey. The next time you look up at the night sky, you'll see it in a whole new light. If you enjoyed this journey don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating insights into our universe.